I have to ask, this was such a passionate project of yours and took what seems like a long time. Was there any time during that process where you almost gave up seeing it come to fruition? Or was it the, the story and owing it to the story and the spirit of the story that kept you going to, to, to it was see this, it? This, it was 11 years and it was the spirit of the story that kept me going. And there was five years where I could not legally get the script back. And I had to just literally pray that no one else was going to try and make it because it was sitting at, at Paramount and they were saying they wouldn't let it out, but uh, it's called Turnaround. But someone, some fancy producer could have come in and maybe been able to convince them as I couldn't as a just a lowly screenwriter. So I had to, I, I kept thinking about the story and going, if I give up, then I'm a big jerk. What have I learned from the story? Nothing, you know? So I, I have to keep going. And uh, the idea that, you know, you only need one yes. And I have hundreds of no's, but I was like, I need one yes. So technically I have a 50-50 shot of right. getting this done. Yeah. Now do you think, do you have any idea of why it, it, it took that long? I think that part of the movie making community sometimes is afraid uh, to put faith in their films. I mean, the, the Lost Boys survived because they had faith. Uh, they, their religion was central, it's central to their identity and it, it gave them strength and uh, as a screenwriter and I write true stories, I mean I wrote for Boardwalk Empire, I mean I, I write right. really muscular things. I was like why should I take that out? Why should I take that out? That's part of who they are and we're telling that story and that's an important story and so there was that element and also because it took place in Africa. The, mm -hmm. People you know, people are loath to make movies there. They're they're like, can it be somewhere else? And it's like, no, that's where, no. you know, so it was a lot of those sort of, and I was just like, I kept thinking, we're going to find it. We'll find it. We'll get it. We'll get right. it. Right. Yeah, you don't make the Titanic on the Mississippi River. It's like, you, you get you, it. Does, it <laughs> that's exactly right. right. I was right. like, and the truth is, the truth of this story is what makes it so incredible. Yeah, and it is a beauty. And you, you talk about the religion and the faith. What moved me the most about, not just the movie, but the, the story since the early 80s, was how they holding on to the joy of life and the spirit and, and the beauty. I mean, we we get stuck in traffic and we're like, God, where are you? Oh, I can't believe this. But everything that they went through, never losing that faith and that joy and that that beauty of spirit and the innocence of life. Was that very important for you guys to capture that on the screen and bring across that? Was that one of the main elements, or? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, that's the one of the beautiful things about about our people and, 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 and Africans, you know? No matter what they go through, they still have the hope and they're still happy. They may have, you know, they, they, they don't have a lot, but what they have is, is faith and hope and family. Mm -hmm. And that's what brings them together. And, and that's the theme of the whole film, togetherness. You know, these guys, they made it uh, to the refugee camp and they made it over to, the, to America because they stuck together. And, and, and that's, as I said, that's one of the beautiful things about African people and, and people as, as, as in general, about the humanity of people. Um, and when people go and watch the movie, they'll definitely see that, and they'll definitely invoke the, the emotion um, within all of us that makes us want to do something and want to help, help right. other people. Yeah, and, I, and I've heard people say that they've even, after seeing the movie, have gone and, and given something because we feel like we should. And Yeah, you were about to say. No, I was just going to add on to the faith aspect of that, in which, because um, I myself um, went through that story myself, and I felt that it's, it's that concept that you don't have anything, you know, you don't have anything physically, but you have a lot mentally and you have this, um, it's optimism in a sense, which faith allows you to have that in this, and that's why how they survived. Well, it's the survival of the spirit that even with nothing, you know, it, these things, they aren't you, your soul is you and no one can ever take your soul. They can take your family, they can take all your stuff, but they can't take that. And I felt that that doesn't matter if you if you worship in a church or if you're a non-believer, we all have souls and we know that. I mean, as human beings, we don't talk about it, but no one can cut into your soul. And that's a big, that, you know, these people live at the essence. We could all live like this too. I mean, this is the essence of, of the human spirit. This is the essence of what life actually is. Mm -hmm. So for me to peel back, you know, to be in Hollywood, where it's covered in layers to try and tell a story that was about not having these layers on top. You know, it was hard to communicate, but I, I found a person who would pay for the film who was a Hollywood producer from Memphis whose family at their church adopted a lost boy. 
So it, it, I found the right person to understand what this film was really about in Molly Smith, and you know, it was he heaven sent, <laughs> I have to say. Right. And a lot of times it is just providence of how everything comes together, mm -hmm. maybe it needed to wait until this very moment, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and to have you guys be involved as well. 11 years ago, it wouldn't have happened that way. It wouldn't yeah. have happened, and <laughs> South Sudan is so vulnerable right now, it's in a terrible humanitarian crisis, and actually we're in a place where if it had come out three years ago, it wasn't in this crisis. So now the film can do more good. We've mm -hmm. created the Good Life Fund to create, to raise humanitarian aid. You can literally, you can leave the movie, go put a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars in this Good Life Fund, and it's going directly to humanitarian aid for people in that Kakuma refugee camp, where there are 160,000 people right now. Amazing. I love the genuine spirit, too, in the film, and there's one particular scene when you you're, you do the chicken crosses the road joke, uh -huh. and, and the way you guys laugh was so genuine, that's what makes that scene work. Was there a there had to be this genuine bond between the three of you guys? That it, really there was, and 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 you know we worked two three of us. We worked so hard. Um, you know we before we started filming, we we had like a month, um, a month of just rehearsals and 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 bonding sessions, just us three. You know they sent us to Atlanta, and then we would do everything together, um, you know, we'd rehearse together, uh, we would um, go back and to each other's rooms and uh, just chill, listen to music together. We actually formed a bond and actually, we actually formed a friendship. And even up to now, we still call, us, call ourselves brothers, you know, and, and that's very rare in, in films, you know, that you actually come out with an actual bond with everyone. And we actually feel like we've created a, another family. Right. through this film. That's how special this film is to us. Yeah. Well, I always say beautiful people make beautiful movies, and you guys did. It was fabulous. And I uh, appreciate Thank your time you. today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.